you're just joining us, please make sure to mute yourself um, so that no uh, untoward sounds at home make it through. Um, thank you so much for, for joining us. Um, I think we are a, a pretty big group of about, I don't know, about 41 households watching right now, um, and 42 if you include the household which is in the room. So uh, without, uh, and at the end, we will, we will take questions through chat, through the little chat thing. So feel free to, um, to do that at the end of the presentation. Our second presentation of the second evening of the Senior Project Presentations 2020 Quarantine Edition. <laughs> Give it up, everyone, for Meyer Timish. <laughs> This all started when I was about 12 years old and my dad announced that we were going to become a surfing family. And he called it, he called it Farm to Surf and said it was part of his midlife adventure because midlife crisis is too negative. Um, but we were all thrilled. This was, this was a great announcement. Um, so from there, we went on several different surfing trips. Um, and it was usually in the winter because summer times are very farm busy. It was also helpful that we were homeschooled and had um, more flexibility in our schedules that way. And so I just really loved the traveling and sitting on the surfboard and watching like turtles come up and poke their little noses out of the <laughs> water to get air or the occasional whale spouting in the distance and fish jumping. And I just really loved that different side of um, just like living, you know, it was, and like the culture was different and um, just like the ocean was something that I really loved and still do. And then, um, yeah, so the idea was that if we grew enough garlic, we could then go take some surfing trips. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then um, the fall of my junior year, I went to conserve school for a few months, um, which is a semester school in northern Wisconsin, where we focused on learning about environmental science and studying outside. And I really loved that a lot, and that also kind of tied into my environmental interests. So then when I got home, um, the end of my high school career was kind of, I could kind of see the end of it a little bit, and that means senior projects. And so I was thinking about what I wanted to do and I wasn't quite sure. Um, so I was bouncing ideas off of my family and somehow scuba diving came up. Uh, and that was something um, that my dad had done like 20 years ago, he got his certification. And so I was like, oh, that actually, that sounds like a cool idea. Like it was pretty open and did, there were lots of things that I could potentially do with that. And so I decided to pursue that over the summer and um, I took some um, scuba diving lessons that started online through Patty, and then we moved on to um, go to a surf shop, or not, a scuba shop in um, Madison, Wisconsin, funnily enough. Um, they do have a dive shop there, if you were wondering. Um, and so we learned how to actually use the equipment more hands-on, and then did some diving in a local pool, before the next weekend, we went to Devil's Lake to kind of get a sense of some bigger waters. Um, we fed some snails to some bass, which was pretty funny. A little highlight from that. Um, and then I continued kind of thinking about what I wanted to do with the rest of the project. And as I was searching, I came across the Coral Restoration Foundation, CRF, where they offer classes to the public to come and learn how to outplant coral. So my dad and I decided to go, to go there for a few days and we started with a fun dive just to kind of get used to actually diving in the ocean <laughs> because I was coming from Wisconsin. Um, <laughs> and we saw lots of cool wildlife and had a guide bring us out and kind of show us how it all worked. Um, there's a picture of a shark we saw in a little canal by our hotel. Um, yeah, so that was super cool. And then the next day we went and took a class um, through the um, Coral Restoration Foundation and they showed us a slideshow and um, kind of they had modules um, of what um, it would actually be like out in the field 
um, where you can't really communicate because you're underwater. So <laughs> they showed us how to clean coral trees. As you can see, hopefully in one of these pictures, there's the PVC pipes, which um, there's young corals hanging from those. And the idea is to keep it as like natural to their environment as possible. I mean, they are hanging from a man-made um, coral tree, which isn't necessarily natural, but it was as close as they could kind of get. And then we also learned how to plant those young corals onto the reef itself. And so then we went out and um, actually got to put these skills to use. And um, yeah, so we we're just cleaning like the algae and like to get um, all the bacteria and kind of grossness off of the coral trees so that they could have a more healthy growing environment. And then we planted the corals in a like pretty small area so that as they grow, they fuse together into one big organism. And something that I found interesting about corals is that they're an animal, not a plant, although they do kind of look more plant-like in my opinion. Um, and then they're also just, they're keystone species, so they're super um, valuable um, with keeping the ecosystem healthy and strong, and they're actually the most biodiverse ecosystem in the world. So that's pretty crazy. Um, <laughs> and they um, host, or they're a host for a lot of different species for habitat and food, and they also create a barrier between like big ocean storms and land, which is really important for coastal communities. And then they also provide income to a lot of people who fish there because that's, again, where a lot of things in the ocean live. Um, yeah, and then after that, we went back to Wisconsin, had some time off, and started planning the next part of my trip, which was Costa Rica. And so we arrived in San Jose, had a couple days there. I turned 18 so that I could actually do the project. <laughs> Got on a bus for seven hours and ended up on the beach, um, the Ostinal, uh Turtle Refuge. And what they mostly do is they protect a um, big strip of land. Um, so it's just like a protected area for turtles to come and nest. It's one of the most popular turtle nesting beaches in the world, um, pretty commonly known. And then there's a little schedule, I don't know if you can see very well, it's, you probably can't read it, but it kind of just says who's doing what and when. Um, the volunteers come and go every week. And then, so there's tur the turtles. There are three types of turtles that have been seen on the beach. The olive red leaves at the top, um, a little illustration, are the most common there by far. Um, those were the only turtles that we saw there. and. Um, they are known for arabadas, which means the arrival, and they, um, that's when a whole bunch of turtles, like literally hundreds of thousands, will come up on the beach at once to nest and lay their eggs, and that happens once every month, um, except for April because it's too hot, and March is kind of 50-50, um, but I think November is when it's most, the most turtles come up. Um, so that's pretty cool. But there's so many that they will like literally be crawling over each other <laughs> um, to find nesting spots. And then there's the green or black turtles, which is kind of like your more, um, probably the turtle you think of, they're kind of more universal. Um, we did not see any while I was there. They're pretty rare on that beach. And then there's the leatherbacks, which can be six feet long and they have big spikes in their esophagus to skewer jellyfish. Yeah, but those are those ones are struggling quite a bit right now, unfortunately, with climate change and um, just like rising sea temperatures and um, their food sources might are like probably being wiped out. But so yeah, they haven't seen any of those on that beach in the last couple of years, which is pretty sad. But the olive olive ridleys are thriving, they're doing good. <laughs> um, so we went on night patrols, and these pictures might be kind of hard to see, but basically what that meant is um, most nights we would have a four hour shift where we would walk down the beach and look for tracks. And if we saw a track, then our leader would go up and investigate to see if there was a turtle. 
And then if there was, we would walk up with our red lights because we don't we didn't use white lights because those are too harsh and might spook the turtles. And we would just be really quiet and stay behind them so we didn't scare them um, while they were doing their doing their digging. Um, and then we would take a measurement of the depth of the hole that they dug and count the eggs. I don't know if you can see, but there's a picture of me counting some eggs. <laughs> and then after 20 eggs, the mama turtles, she's kind of in a trance, like she's just really locked in on her job and what she's doing and won't really be bothered by much. So then you can gently handle the turtle. So we just measured the shell and the flippers and checked to see if there was a tag to see if she was a returning turtle. And then we'd give her a little tag so you could see where she goes. And um, then just let her finish laying and bury her eggs. And then she, she'd just go back and do her thing. So um, yeah, that was our nightly routine. And then all this information was put down in blog books and then transferred to an online um, like place too, so that it could be looked back on and compared with um, the findings from other turtles and kind of see um, relationships or if there are drastic changes in what the um, like what their behavior was um, and yeah and then in the day um, there was less work going on because it was so hot but there would be so like there would usually be a couple hours in the afternoon um, so one day we were fixing the markers on the beach, which serve to um, kind of just like show you where you are on patrol. So you write that in the little book, um, the location of the turtle. And we also did a lot of beach cleanups, just to remove trash and then sort it to be recycled. Um, and then we had one day that was an egg excavation, which happens a certain number of days after the Arvada. So the babies hopefully would have hatched by then. That's the idea of when it happens, is that they already would be back in the water. And um, we would have different sections, about a square yard um, around the beach, and then we'd excavate to see what kind of eggs were in there. And the vast majority were already dead, um, rotten eggs. And that was probably because it was a hotter time of the year and they kind of cook themselves in the sand. Um, so out of the many, many, many nests that we did find, only a couple of them were fresh, good nests. And those we just left, we didn't touch them, we covered them back up again so that the babies could still um, reach maturity. And, but yeah, it was very messy work. And then some of the eggs um, were still like somewhat in shape enough that we could open them up and check the devel development of the turtle and try and figure out like why they hadn't made it. Um, so downtime, there was quite a bit of it in, during the day, because night was when most of the action was going on. Um, but that would be spent swimming or playing cards or napping because of the night patrols. <laughs> and then I did some art uh, per, by request of some of the other volunteers, um, so they would like give me funny little prompts and then I'd paint them something. So these are <laughs> a few of the things I made for them. Some of them have some stories behind them. There is a leatherback fighting Godzilla. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, so why are turtles important though? Like coral makes sense, they're part of an ecosystem. So turtles are also keystone species and they actually help um, groom the coral and seagrass, which store carbon. Um, and so that just helps those, those organisms grow and be healthy. And then also their eggs that they lay on the beach um, benefits the land by providing essential nutrients so that plants can grow along the beach. And then also those eggs and um, the hatchlings, which is sad, but they, they do um, provide food to a lot of wildlife. So it's, it's a sad thing, but it's a good thing because those things need to eat too. <laughs> and then they also <laughs> um, are helpful to coastal economies or to the coastal economies and um, small businesses 
or bigger businesses, I guess, as well. But with tourism and um, being like divers wanting to go, like look at turtles, or there have also been studies that they help with people's mental health <laughs> when you get to see one in the wild. So yeah, so through all of this, I learned a lot, and it really like showed me that um, I would like to continue doing environmental slash travel things in the future and I don't exactly know how that would pan out but I really enjoyed this experience so thank you all <laughs>
How can we know that already? I have actually not heard those statistics, but um, I'm glad to hear it. I mean, I know there's a lot of um, good environmental things coming out of this. Um, so, yeah. Um, how long were you underwater for? That's from Moses. Um, oh gosh, what was it? Like an hour at a time? There were like more than one dive in one day, but then we'd have to go up and switch tanks. So I think it was probably about an hour. What? That's scary. My nightmare. <laughs> That's from Jane. <laughs> okay. Great. Uh, I think I think those are all the questions. Uh, Dodi said that was a lovely job and very persuasive travel advertisement. <laughs> oh, something just came in. Huh? What did you wear diving? What equipment? Um, so we have BCDs or a buoyancy control device. It's kind of like a, that's sort of like a backpack vest type thing. So then you can like pump air into it and then put your weights in there. And then we have the tank and a mask and a snorkel just in case. And then um, there's like the, like the main hub part of the, um, or the thing that connects to the tank, which you breathe through. So that's like the tubes that are in there. And flippers. <laughs> awesome. Yay!